after a huge season on the Grand Banks. Good man, good man. The fleet placed their bets on new waters. I'm optimistic that we'll find some fish on Georgia's. Free as will be westbound and down, son. And so far, they've crapped out. Under the gun pretty hard. We got our ass beat up here on uh, Georgia's. Now, under a mountain of debt, each captain puts it all on the line to get a paycheck or go under trying. If you don't have too much fish, you know, really ain't no price going to save you. 110 miles off the coast of New Jersey is the 72-foot Francis Ann. First beeper, Skipper Rick. Hope he'll put us on the fish quick. Here we are. We're just pulling up to our beeper here. We'll see. It's hoping for something. Boat owner and captain Rick Mears is desperate to put fish on the boat and cash in his pocket. But so far, hooks are coming up empty. Come on, ladies. With red numbers staring him in the face, Rick took over the captain's seat from longtime skipper Chris Slick Clem. I'm going to run the boat next trip. Business first, so I hope you're not upset, but whatever. Now, Slick is just like the other deckhands, dependent on his captain to bring home a payday. I don't consider it a demotion. If it is a demotion, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It's Rick's call. Now he's in control of making the boat the check, making the crew the check. So now the tables are turned a little bit here. So far, the fish aren't cooperating, or they're coming up small. That's a little baby guy. Rack tuna? It's too small. Worth anything? Throwing them back? Yep, throwing them back. We're sportsmen here. Next year he'll be 50, 60 pounds. We're conservers. We got a thing about our future. If you do the right thing, you will be rewarded. Fish on! Now there's life on the line. Fish on. Huge. Looks like a live tuna here. It's pumping. Big eye tuna. Over the rail and into my pail. That's a keeper. It's about a 60 pound big eye. It's a fat Albert. This looks seems like a happy camper back there. It's hard not to be happy when it's weathered like this. No. It's a start. One big eye is better than no big eyes. Hours later, this $300 tuna was just a tease. Not biting today. This is another empty hook. And Rick's first day is a bust. Yeah, a little bit of frustration today. Yeah, the first day, things didn't go as planned, you know. Didn't catch a whole lot. I hate coming out and not catching anything, man. Really, just depressing. We paid for a gallon of milk, a box of cereal, maybe last night's dinner, but that was about it. We didn't, we didn't pay for anything major today. A long-line captain can't afford to wallow in defeat. But whatever, it happens. Tomorrow be another day. He's got to shoulder the burden and trust his next move will pay off. We're not going to bail out on the area completely yet. But we'll give it another try. And hopefully tomorrow we'll get a better sign of fish. If not, we should move somewhere else, but that's not my decision this time. It's more on Rick's shoulders than my shoulders now, so I'm not going to worry about it just yet. Six hundred twenty miles to the south is the 55-foot Big Eye. I'm starting to panic. First trip was good, now the second trip ain't, so I'm doing what I can to get the second trip. Like Rick Mears, Captain Chris Chomps Hansen not only captains the Big Eye, he owns it. I definitely feel pressure. This boat don't catch fish, I lose everything I got. On his first trip, the Big Eye hooked a boat full of money fish. <laughs> Woo! But after a run of bad luck, catching nothing, getting ass kicked. Chomps took off south to his home waters. Rolled the dice and took off to go south versus uh taking the feet and going home. Deeply in debt, he's betting that his home waters will reward him. The Gulf Stream is just the uh, hot water that runs up the coast. 
It's a current that pushes up from the tip of Florida all the way up to Hatteras, and then it goes out towards Newfoundland. You know, this place is famous for catching a lot of swordfish, and we get down here right south of Charleston, and we set in the corner of the stream. The stream comes up and turns, and we're fishing right there in that turn is what we're doing. Now, Chomps' crew are left with only a hope that their skipper's gamble pays off. Maybe the ocean's got something to give us. Play, this is one of them times where they're hungry. If we don't catch them, it's just not meant to be. If we catch them, it is. So that's just the way it is. I'll be happy with a 1,000 pounds a day if I can keep it steady. Six hundred fifty miles to the north is the ninety-foot Eagle Eye Two. Yeah, I'm seeing plenty of lobster gear, but I'm not seeing any of our gear. On his second day, Captain Scotty Drabinowitz is burning fuel without catching fish. Well, we got in the lobster traps yesterday. We're still in the lobster traps. We had to cut it off. Couldn't make any sense out of it here last night. We got about two and a half sections left in the water. Today's disaster is a long way from the epic fishing they had on the Grand Banks just nine days ago. There's a thousand dollar bill of fins. He hoped to extend his winning streak in the coastal waters, but instead of conquering new territory... All right, just watch that flyer. He's spending his time pulling gear out of lobster pots and untangling lines. This is a salvage job today. It's not looking real good at all. We got to... You know, we got to get this stuff out of the water. We can't afford to lose any more gear. The orange blue ball, that's what we're supposed to get to. We've got some gear here right now, so time to go to work. Scotty finds some gear. The line is just wrapped up on itself, miles of it. But it's too tangled to wind under the drum. It goes in between the traps, and the tide just keeps mixing it up and rolling it up and putting it together. Long line gear floats freely with the current, but lobster traps and their high flyer buoys are anchored at the bottom. If long line gear drifts into lobster gear, the line tangles and when hauled, the full weight of the lobster gear can pull the main line to its breaking point. Ugh, freaking absolute nightmare. We're gonna lose all this main line. Now the crew has to pull the main line in by hand until it's free of the traps. Did I get my head right there? No. Coming in, out and in. There's a high flyer there. How tight is it? Is it? I right, take it to the stern or something so we don't get it in the wheel. You got a leader underneath the boat. The line is under pressure. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Hurry up, Brian. What's the line? Oh. All right. Coming up next, a cruise punished for tangling with lobster okay. pots. And later. I'll give you $100 to jump on his back, wrestle him right down. Hundred thirty nine miles off the Massachusetts coast is the Eagle Eye Two. Cut the main line. Yeah. Can't get a little... Brian, quick. Grab a gas. Hurry up, Brian. They're struggling to get the main line out of a string of lobster traps. The thousand pound main line snaps and bull whips deckhand Brian Turk. What? All right, yes. Okay, we'll haul this piece. There's a lot of tension on the main line there and it snapped. Come back and whip them pretty good. What happened? I didn't even see. It was just it was wrapped around the, the, the shack there and it came back through here to the door. Yeah. It was just so tight. Tight, you just plow. Yeah. Got a little scare and a little bit of a sting, but he's all right. Lucky. We gotta get this gear up here. We're drifting right towards the lobster traps and uh, it's not looking real good at all. A tangled mess that was once the main line is piling up on deck. Ah, there's the beeper. 
this frustrating situation becomes a dangerous one. Worst case scenario, just somebody stand by to cut that main line. Don't want that snarl getting ripped out and then you guys ripped overboard. Pull up. It doesn't take much oh. to pull a deckhand over the rail. Man overboard! Yeah, that's how you take his foot out of that. I like pulling his right. foot and he go overboard. Never see him again. Get that beeper off. Right there, Daryl. Right here, right here. Get loose. There. The last beeper is aboard, but over $5,000 worth of mainline is a total loss. You can't save the leader, the old up, they're all braided up in, in, in the mono, so you can't save nothing. You can't have no sense in this. This is nonsense. Good chunk of change we've lost. Swivel hooks, main line, snaps, all gone. Major bummer. Bottom line is we're going to have to pay for it. We're not going in. We're going to keep fishing. We'll just be fishing less gear now. It's a wicked annoyance to Major. Six hundred fifty miles south of the Eagle Eye Two is the Big Eye. We're just fishing in one spot. It's like a system, something, something to go to, something that we know where we're going to go to every day. Unwilling to walk away from the table, Captain Chomps bet the fate of his entire season on a piece of water off the Carolina coast. When having a plan, fishing's always good. If it turns out a good outcome, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, I'll just have to deal with it. Either way. The object and the goal is to fill the boat up and go home. Ah, no people going in the boat. So far, Chomps has been rolling snake eyes. Sure wish we'd catch some. pound marker confirms Chomp's instincts. Might not be nothing here, but it sure as hell looks like it's up here. And it'll pay out a cool 1500 bucks. You know, 100 more just like it. Swordfish! Oh, yeah. Get that marker! Keeper! Nice one! Come on! Watch him do it. Come on! Woohoo! Kicking ass, taking names. With sword after sword stacking on deck, yeah. good fortune is once again smiling on the big eye. We're doing all right. Do that four or five days in a row, we'll be doing good. Parker. Keeper. Wow. Yeah. Back up. <laughs> Got a nice one. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's the biggest run of swords the big eye's seen since leaving the Grand Banks. A lot better than I expected. Rock and roll. This single $7,000 haul will knock off half the boat's expenses. As far as the crew, they're happy that uh, we finally put something on the boat, so I don't hear no complaints. You know, we probably got 2,000 pounds, so uh, I'll say that we have to be happy with the outcome of the day. As long as we can keep a steady amount of weight coming on the boat every day, uh, we'll be looking like we might have a future. A hundred thirty miles off the coast of New Jersey is the Bjorn Two. Fishing's not what I hoped it would be. We'll keep plugging here. We're not ready to throw the towel in yet. 
just like Scotty, Captain Linda Greenlaw is treading in unfamiliar waters. Although it's closer to home, it's farther from my home, I think, you know, just my comfort zone. Almost all of my experience is on the Grand Banks off Newfoundland. Struggling to find a productive piece of water. Hey, a blue shark. The Bjorn 2 is hopelessly sharked up. We're out of the ditch, now we're just stuck in a rut. A very sharky, sharky rut. Oh man, we've been out here too long. I'm not too impressed so far with the coastal waters, sir. Not being kind. Shark. Shark. Blue sharks have no commercial value and actually cost the boat in lost gear. Stop twisting, I'm trying to help you. And aggravation. All right, that was my good deed for the day. Yeah, right. Late in the day, a sign of hope. Wait, coming here. Promises, promises. Don't get any more. Honest. Yeah. That's a good sign. It's the best sign we've had all day of anything. Finally, chalk one up. But the sharks caught this sword first. Wah, wah, wah. Finally got a fish and the tail was bitten off by a shark. Blue sharks are hungry here. Very unfortunate. Not catching a lot, and when you see that come on board, it sort of drains your spirits that much more. So I'm sure the captain would be thinking pretty hard today as to what the game plan is going to be after this. That's it. Absolute nightmare. Struggling and out of her element, Linda turns to a local yeah, captain you know, for a lead on where to find the fish. There wasn't anything anywhere. It was all sharks over. You know, this water will be pushing right up onto the, onto the bank. And, you know, we had fish there you know, a few days ago. And, uh, I'm sure they're still there. It's got to be as good as anything I've been trying over here. Okay, sounds good. Yep, okay, stand by. I don't fish around here, so I don't know really what he's talking about, but being all sharked up today, I'm ready. After coming up empty on the day's haulback, Linda's got to make a move. Many different types of fish hang around these banks. It's where the feed is, where there's feed, there's going to be predator fish, and that's why we're here. And she hopes her fellow captain's hotspot isn't just a fish story. Pretty much willing to try anything different than what we had today. 90 miles to the east is the Eagle Eye 2. Steaming down the southeast here to get some deeper water. Hopefully, uh, we catch something here tonight besides lobster traps. While Linda moves to fish George's bank, Scotty is steaming away from it, playing it safe, and staying far away from the costly lobster traps. We don't want to go in the traps again, that's for sure. Worst I've ever had it, for sure. Unbelievable, man. By nightfall, Scotty finds a promising spot of water. Ready? All right, Daryl. And the crew's ready to put their last haul behind them. We need something positive right now. In the water! I don't know how many sections were set tonight. I haven't made my mind up yet. But up to seven. Why, well, actually, up to everything we got on the boat, which is seven. Normally, Captain Scotty's 40-mile main line is made up of nine sections, with each section containing over 100 baited hooks. But with two sections ruined in the traps, Scotty and the crew are now fishing only seven sections. That leaves them 200 fewer chances to put fish in the hold. Yeah, it kind of sucks now. Charge sit here on the Georges, and we already lost two full sections of gear. Five or six thousand dollars right off the top. Which is not good. You gotta pay for enough already. Yeah, we just tangle up in the lobster traps again more. Time for the skipper to go and find a new job. <laughs> Can't go lose the five or six thousand dollars for the gear every day. Tonight, the crew's getting a boost from an old friend. 
Full moon's up. Shining bright. Hopefully we can get the fish to bite. Yeah, it's pretty full moon here, that's for sure. We get these critters biting and everything going our way for a change. They all say that the full moon rises and the fish start biting. I guess it attracts bait fish and it attracts predators, something like that. That's the way I figure it anyway. They're going to need all the help they can get to turn this trip around. It's fishing. You never know what the hell you're going to catch. Hundred thirty nine miles off the Massachusetts coast is the Eagle Eye 2. The moon's still pretty full here right now, so kind of let the gear soak an extra hour. Down to only three quarters of his gear after tangling with the lobster traps, Scotty's got to make every hook count on this haul. All we need is one good hit, one big day on these fish here, and we go from keeping our heads above water to, you know, making money. All right, we'll get ready to go here. We're running a new piece of water here in Albany. I hope there's still a few big eyes and a few little fins and a few swordfish still around. And so far, the first 50 hooks have drawn a blank. Got something here. Don't know what it is yet. That's starting to pull. Bingo! Oh, yeah, nice big eye. A big eye tuna means a thousand dollar start to the day. Fox fighting it on the line now. If they can land it. Yeah! yeah. Nice big eye tuna. Yeah. Yeah. Nice big eye. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice fish. I love seeing those nice big eyes. Captain Scotty's full moon set is delivering. I'm excited! Oh! Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice eye, nice eye. Yeah, we're picking away here today. Right on. Yeah, fuck it! Thank you. We got a nice fish there to go along with the tuners we got today. Yeah, baby! Nice 100 pounders. Land them up now after this bundle, I guess. The crew hauled in over 2,000 pounds. Yeah, 20 fish. Good deal. But just as Scotty hits a money spot, Mother Nature threatens to reshuffle the water and cool down his hot streak. Well, we've got a little bit of a storm coming through here. This is a weather map of today at 8 o'clock in the morning. You wouldn't think anything's going to form. Now we click it to the weather map at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Boom. We got a storm. Things are, you know, kind of starting to go our way here. The way the wind's coming down from the north here tomorrow, I mean, it, it could mess the whole water up. Basically, I'm going to be starting at square one again. You know, not happy about it. Just 70 miles to the west of the Eagle Eye 2 is the Francis Ann. It's been a while since we've caught anything. A lot of empty hooks here. Owner and captain Rick Mears is feeling the pressure to have a winning trip and to put a paycheck in his crew's pockets. Yeah, it's starting to get frustrated here. We've been out here for a few days already. Yeah, they still aren't cooperating, so ain't wasting time out here for sure. Slick doesn't mind Rick taking on the extra stress of being captain, but he won't be happy with a small paycheck. Just used to catching a pile of fish every day, so it's kind of slow right now. Come on, Marcus, where are they at? I hope Rick has a something of his speed for a few days and fishes up and pick up and things like this. Big one, but he's a keeper anyway. So he's a keeper, but he's not what we're looking for. Right. 
expenses right now. I mean, or whatever, fifteen or eighteen thousand dollars in the hole. So every little bit uh, counts right now. Yeah, everything's adding up, but adding up slow. So far, we really haven't paid for too much of the expense. Even his nephew Danny wonders whether his uncle can deliver. Right now, my paycheck's pretty much non-existent, so definitely got a little pressure on us. Maybe put something together here at the end, of the second half of the trip. Something pretty grim right now. But... Just frustrating day after day, waiting for the bite. With just a few thousand dollars of fish in the hold, Rick may have done better if he'd stayed on shore. Now I came on board here looking to, you know, I'd take matters into my own hands here and put some fish on the boat. So, yeah, if we did catch them, yeah, it'd be a disaster, you know. And his crew's starting to lose faith. We've been working our asses off for the past almost week. We haven't made a dime yet, not even close. I don't know how many more days of this I can take. Except in the back of my mind, I might have another broker trip here. Right now, it's the waiting game, I think. I hope. Just keep my fingers crossed. We all have bills to pay. I already had one slow trip behind us, so we got to start catching some fish. Thirty miles to the west is the Bjorn Two. Looks like this uh, first beeper's fouled up with some trap gear. I can see a high flyer. I can see. Uh, our beeper. Last night, a local yeah. captain advised Linda to set her gear closer to George's bank. Yeah, we had fish there you know, a few days ago. But he didn't warn her to watch for the lobster traps. I just wasn't aware that that trap gear was there. Basically sat right on top of it last night. Um, it's not starting off good. Shaping up to be a real disaster here. To free their main line, Linda and her crew must bring their beeper aboard. I'll come up on it if I can. And once on deck, separate it from the high flyer buoy that marks the lobster fisherman's gear. right overboard and there would have been no stopping it. Now back to start fishing. Deckhand Dave Hiltz is ready to take matters into his own hands. You want to join our mutiny? Harry, me, and you? You want to go home? Nate's in. Don't hold your breath, man. I know this is looking like a let's go home day. We're not done yet. We're all screwed up today. It's going to be a long one. Hard it off. Captain Linda's hunt for fish is becoming a battle to find her gear. We've had just about everything that could go wrong, go wrong so far here today. And keep her crew. Dave's planning a mutiny. I'm sure he'd have some takers today, the way it's going so far. 
Hell, I might join him. A hundred miles off the coast of New Jersey is the Francis Ann. Get her gear back up here. Hope there's a few fish on it. They're just not biting right now. It's the bottom line. Time is running out on boat owner and captain Rick Mears. With no fish in the hole, he's staring at another losing trip. It's gonna happen here sooner or later, but geez, you start to run out of patience. You know? Doctors have patience, not fishermen. To make matters worse, rough weather has blown onto the coastal grounds. It's a new day. Rain it. Not particularly nice out. Just really sucks. And his crew is losing patience. It's got to be tough being the captain on a trip like this. He's doing the best he can, but it's not cut, and it, we're not going to make it by at this rate. The day begins with empty hooks again. Come on. Feeling the weights away, creeping up on them. But moments later. That's a big sword. Captain Rick has life on the line. Big swordfish. Wow, it's hell. Five swordfish. Wow, show us your bill. And they're not about to let this one get away. Somebody grab my damn feet. <laughs> ah, I'm out. I'm in them good. I'm in them good. I'm in them good. A $500 marker is exactly what Rick needs. If we just pick a few more decent sized ones here, we'll be all right for the day. Watch the bill. And two hooks later, another $500 deposit. Not a bop aside. Yeah. Woo. Catching some nice sized fish today. Take good fishing over good weather. You don't like being wet around the element? Don't do it. The Francis Ann is on the fish. Yeah! Woo! Keep them coming, keep them coming. And the captain can finally hold his head high. It's a swordfish. Good fish, come on, nice fish, Rick. Come on, yeah. Come on. By the end of the haulback, they pulled in over 15 marker swords. A $4,000 day for the crew and owner. Everything can't be perfect. You're not going to have good fishing and good weather. I knew when we come out, it was going to be a grind at the beginning of the trip. Maybe this will be our turning point. Who knows? You know, caught a few fish today. Kind of saved the day. Made a little something of it. Hopefully from here on in, we'll start putting some better days together. 20 miles to the west is the Bjorn 2. Volleyball and uh, a bundle of floats left to this next beaver. After finally freeing her lines from the traps, Linda's now chasing her parted off gear in high seas. The problem is with these part offs today is the weather's too severe to really chase floats back adding a lot of time to our day so far. While she scans the gray skies for a sign of gear, Linda battles to hold the Bjorn 2 on course. She was bouncing all over the place. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, I see it, I see it, yep, good job. Hitting the deck to haul in 30 miles of line in 15 foot seats isn't doing much for Dave's attitude. Oh yeah, it's real. Blowing 40 miles an hour. Well, yeah, it's possible to catch fish. I mean, they're, they're on the line, but everything's against us. Hauling directly into the swell, Linda and her crew are hoping there'll be no more traps and tangles. Hold on. Oh, 
Keep coming. The last fish are pulled aboard under the lights. Yeah! Despite the nasty conditions, Captain Linda and her crew managed to put 16 fish in the hole. This has been a long day. It's a better day than we had yesterday as far as the fish go, but a real, a real nightmare as far as just trying to get the gear on the boat. I just, my hat's off to my guys for putting up with it all day long. One hundred thirty-nine miles off the New Jersey coast is the Eagle Eye II, the fleet's top earner. It pulled up nearly fifty thousand pounds of fish. The Francis Ann takes up the rear with twenty-eight thousand three hundred pounds. Jockeying for position, the Bjorn II has struggled to put more weight in the hole, while the Big Eye, capitalizing on the move south, is closing in on the leader. Now fishing the rich Gulf Stream, the Big Eye is in the midst of a steady run of swords. The thing about the Gulf Stream, it don't never stop. It keeps going all the time. But there's trouble on the horizon. The tropical depression of Ida, it's a powerful storm, severe, intense weather. To deal with something like that, it's not something that all fishermen do, or, or I even recommend somebody, somebody even try to fish through it or, or fish around it. Ida's on a collision course with a little big eye. But with good fishing, Captain Chomps isn't ready to back down. As long as I got bait, fuel, food on this boat, there's no reason to go to the dock. On deck, the crew's still stacking up the fish. Whoa. There he is. A live sword suddenly turns on the crew. As the fish fights, Greenhorn Don loses control, and Deckhand Glenn takes a sword bill to the chest. Did he get you? I got him. Could have been both of them. Both of them, all of us could have got some of them. Pretty things are razor sharp. As soon as I saw him, something I slipped out of his glove. He probably didn't want to cut his hand or cut right through the glove. He's just a little guy, and the little guy's got sharper swords than the big guys. I was backing away as quick as I could. A sword's bill can slice you up good, but this big boy will have you for lunch. Bring him on up here to the boat. Captain Chomps hooks an 11-foot tiger shark. Then issues a challenge to his crew. Anybody want to check the wheel? I'll give you $100 to jump on his back, wrestle him right down. I will. He gets no takers and lets the shark go. Get away, get away. But now his main line is hung up. Oh, Chris, it's in the wheel. Yeah, it's in the wheel. And the big guy's dead in the water. Engine stalled out. Got an automatic shut off when something goes wrong like that. It's not a pretty sign when you when the boat cuts off and you're hauling gear and you still got half your gear in the water. And a big gale coming on. The little big eye is in a dangerous situation. They've lost all power and the leading edge of Hurricane Ida 
is bearing down. We try to stop happening, but uh, occasionally it goes in the wheel, so that's why we got me. All right, here we go. To free the wheel, Woody's forced to brave the sharky waters. With his brother working feverishly to free his boat, Chomps checks on the approaching storm. Being a commercial fisherman and working around the dangerous and hazardous uh, conditions and weather conditions, it's just part of the job. It's Mother Nature's a rough, uh, it can be rough for you, you know, it can be the best friend or your worst enemy. That's just what happens offshore, you know, the ocean's a very large place. Better get your foul weather gear on. Next time on SOAR. Gotta be with anybody that's out here. A hurricane scatters the fleet. That thing is as big as the whole United States. And one crew oh. loses its grip. Uh. Yes. 